So this is this building actually used to be on the waterfront, uh, and that's all landfill over that way. So we used to have a waterfront view. It was built in 1904. It had quite a lot of families staying in it. And then in the recent history, it's quite famous because Gorbachev stayed here when he came for the secret meeting to end the Cold War. And uh, the French president, whose name I always mispronounce, stayed here in 86 when they read the Statue of Liberty. Mitterrand? Francois Mitterrand? That's it, Mitterrand. Thank you so much. Graduation. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I read it, but I was like, I don't want to say it wrong. Um, so it's got quite a history, and then it just got left. Uh, and it was really falling apart. And so we've come in and we've started to do the first stage of restoration, which is to, to secure the walls. Uh, we've essentially started to secure the ceiling, but that needs to be part of this by second level of restoration. Uh, and we're in the process of applying for the building for long term from the city to make that extra commitment and then i'll just tell you a bit about the organization this is the hollow center the center for holographic arts it's an organization that started in 1988 uh, it was founded by people who used to work at the museum of holography in soho anna maria nicholson uh, these are some of anna maria nicholson's works she does two sorts of work. Uh, she's quite well known for her portraits. And she was running the portrait uh, studio at the Museum of Holography. Uh, we'll come around in a minute and look at the portraits in the library. Is that blank? Some of the ones that she made. Is that blank? Okay. Yeah. No, no, you're going to stand here. It's not standing here. It's live. Yeah. You need to move around to see the holographs. And it's not only, it's not only the, the left and right position, but also the up and down. Up and down also. Well, it, changes. Uh, yeah, it changes. They move. And there's, there's dynamics. And Anna Marie also did a piece in this room, Shiva Dancer. And these works are part of Anna Marie's more artistic works. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, there's, she did a lot of series where she, she really thinks about the radiant soul and the skin of the body and capturing people's radiance. I think I'm a mosquito trying to get you. Yeah. Cheeky <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, let's get him. Um, so, and she did a large exhibition into the nine in 2009 and has since retired. She's happy to be a grandma. Um, but her pieces are beautiful. They're in collections around the world. The, the exhibition you see here is from different artists from all over the world and then there's a, a theme of colour that runs through them. So we'll come back and talk about the colour in each of the pieces. Uh, this piece here is a piece by a German artist, Julia Schmiedel. This piece is actually a stereographic piece so that as you move left to right you see animation. As you move up and down you see a change of colour. And Usually the change of colour that you see in a hologram when it, you move up and down like this, these are, are rainbow holograms or transmission holograms. So a transmission hologram is where the light's coming through the hologram. A reflection hologram is where the light is bouncing off the hologram. Uh, in this case, the artist has done a transmission hologram and then put it onto a mirror. So that the image you're seeing is actually because light's going through the hologram and then bouncing back to play. So it's a transmission hologram on mirror. The piece here is by another German artist, Julia Schmidl and uh, Guillermo Frederico Heinz actually studied together. They were students of mine when I was working in Germany. And Guillermo, uh, he decided that what was interesting for him about the holograms was the material itself. And he got very interested in the recording material. And this hologram is on dichromate gelatin, which is a material that he makes. So he actually mixes gelatin and chemicals together to make a photosensitive material. He then coats it onto the film, exposes it to light, and puts in alcohol to evaporate all of the um, structure, and that leaves the hologram. So this process is very um, labor intensive. It also uh, is quite a handmade process. It's gaining popularity among August Muth, 
who's a very famous holographer in Santa Fe. He does a lot of work with this technique. He does it quite large scale. And also a lot of artists use this technique to make jewelry on a very small scale. Um, each piece is quite unique because of the way you're coating the film yourself. This hologram is one particular wave. It's actually got quite a, a historical uh, aspect to it. It was made in 1987 by Gerald Marx during a residency at MIT. More computing power went into this than the moon trip. They had super the computers to render the image. And to see the, to see the colors correctly, you want to put your eyes about the high. So for most of us, to bend down. Oh. The concept of this hologram that he was exploring was the wave particle duality of light. So you see the, the light mapped out as waves of color and also mapped as sort of like a ball because he's still thinking about the wave particle duality. Uh, and this is a multiplex hologram or a stereogram. People use both terms to describe these holograms. Some people call them integral holograms as well. And that's the thing that's quite confusing about holography is it's still young. And so there are lots of words for the same thing. And it's still finding which word wins in the end. <coughs> you find the same sort of thing with hol uh, filmmaking or photography. But generally after 50, 100 years, one word rises to the surface and everyone uses that word. So I like to call them multiplex holograms, but then I've been working with some artists recently who call them integral holograms, so it's... Well, people call them films still, and they don't shoot them on film anymore. I know, that's the thing. Yeah, it, it changes, and then it speaks, and it's right, accurate. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, how many different types of holograms are there at the moment? I mean, is it ever expanding? It's ever expanding in terms of the computer generated style of holograms and also uh, holographic chips essentially. So, uh, materials that are active, like a holographic properties that are active. And this is where a lot of the research is happening. Holographic video uh, is like in the process of slowly happening. And whether it will come through as holographic video or will be a side technology, again, yet to be determined. Um, if you notice with this hologram, if you get all the way to the side, you can actually see the credits. So if you come all the way to the side and you move around, and that's in one frame of the hologram, you can see it as two frames, and that's because your two eyes are seeing that frame in different positions. So if you want to try and read the credits, it's easier if you block one eye and then move around to try and read the credits. <clears throat> and that gives you an idea of what one in the frames looks like. How many frames are there on that? I think that this one is 180. Oh. Oh. Uh, there's a little counter on the side. Each of those big blocks is 10. Okay. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So... Oh. I'll definitely get to 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. There might be a hundred frames in it. Why is there a mirror? Why is there a mirror? So this is a, a transmission hologram, so the light should come from behind. But the artist wanted to make it easy to put on the wall, oh. so he installed it with a mirror. Okay. The one of the original installations of this, it was actually installed into a doorway um, with the light. Excuse me. <laughs> with the light coming through behind, because he wanted to also have a feeling of the space behind. And then a, a copy of this hologram was at the National, no, not National, New York Hall of Science, and was exhibited at the New York Hall of Science for many.